Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at 3D printing. We're going to learn about how you can take your sculpt and make sure they're ready for 3D printing and also some tips about when you're sculpting, what to look out for. This is all part of a series where I go from sculpting in Blender and go through the process of printing out a 3D model. Do check out the links in the description for my sculpting playlist and also links to other courses. So I'm in Blender 2.92, it's the alpha version, so it might look slightly different if you're viewing this in the future. Here's my wolf as a quick reminder, and we want to get him into our 3D printing program, ready for our 3D printing. So first of all, if you haven't got your statistics for your mesh on the side here, then you want to go up to overlays at the top here and tick the statistics box. That way you can see how many triangles and faces it has. Now this I would say is far more than you need, unless you're printing something that's three meters big, which is probably impossible. So we'll want to reduce that. The easiest way and probably the best way is to use the decimate modifier, not the remesh in the sculpting, because that will change the shape. The decimate will try its best to keep the shape as much as possible. So with our wolf selected, let's go across to the modifiers where your spanner or wrench is, add modifier, and there's the decimate under generate. Now the ratio here will tell you what percentage of faces or triangles or whatever it will be reduced to. And I've got two and a half million triangles, so I think we can easily reduce that to 200,000 by coming in here and pressing 0.1. Now it will take a moment. My computer's reasonably powerful and it still takes some time. I'll speed this bit up. Okay, so that's done and it's decimated my object. I can't tell any visible difference and you can zoom in. You can kind of see that the shape is all triangulated. But you can see there we've got 250,000 faces rather than 2 million. And this will be a lot better for 3D printing. The main reason is that your file size will be loads smaller. That means when you put it into your slicer program, it won't take so long to slice up. And we're not actually losing any quality here. We could probably go even lower than that, but 250,000 is absolutely fine. Now we will need to apply this modifier. If you're in 2.8, you'll have an apply option there, as long as you're in object mode, and not edit mode. In 2.9, we can come to this drop down here and press apply, or we can use the shortcut, control A, to apply our modifier. Now that will again take a few moments, and I'll speed it up once again, and there we are. Now I can click on my object, I can go into edit mode reasonably safely now, and you can see the density of the mesh. So you can see where there's detail, it's tried its best to maintain the fidelity. Okay, so that's the first thing, to reduce the poly count of our mesh. The second thing to think about is the size of our mesh, so if I go to front view, and just zoom out just a touch, each of these big squares are one meter. And if I press N on my keyboard and go across to item, we can see that we're 2.86 meters in the Z axis. So this is a really big object. So let's reduce that. I can click and drag across my scale and type in 0.1. And now we're at 28 centimeters, which is a bit more like it. Let's zoom in on that by pressing full stop on my numpad. And I think a good 3D printing size is more like 10 centimeters or below. It does depend on what size your 3D printer can print to, of course. So I'm going to reduce this again. To make it easier myself, I'm going to press Control A to apply the scale. That will set this back to one, and then I can change this in a percentage again. So 0.3, and now we're nearer 10 centimeters. I'll zoom in on that once more, and Control A to apply the scale, so we're back to one. To be honest, when you export, that will be set to one anyway. And also, Blender has a slight peculiarity when it comes to the actual dimensions here compared to 3D printers but we'll sort that out in the export. The next thing to be aware of is the angle. So if I come to side view now, anything within a 45 degree angle will need supports. So what I mean by that is, let's say this item just here, if I draw a line across there and up there, this area here, if that's 45 degrees or less, we're going to have problems and need supports. So areas around here, possibly in there, the ears and just under the tail here, these areas will probably need supports. You want to minimize this where you can, but often it's difficult to do this when you're sculpting because it can interfere with your artistic expression. So don't worry about this too much, but be aware that that will need supports and they can turn out a bit rough and jaggedy. You will need to tidy those up by kind of tearing them off your 3D print and maybe rubbing them down with a file or sandpaper. Lastly, your mesh will need to be manifold. That means it doesn't have any holes in, so if I go into edit mode again and zoom in, and let's say go to face mode, select a face and press delete, this mesh is now non-manifold. I'll undo that. So you've got to make sure there are no holes in it 
or overlapping geometry. So if I, still in edit mode, add a cube, and let's scale this right down, and added my cube here, this is overlapping, and although I think some slicing programs can deal with this, I'm not sure, but just keep away from that. Make sure you've joined the geometry together with either a Boolean or a remesh so it doesn't have any inside faces like this one in here. So once again, I'll undo that and go back to object mode. So once you've checked those stages, we need to export this into a file that our slicer program can understand. The program I'll be using is Ultimaker Cura version 4.8, but I believe all slicing programs can understand the file format .sdl. So with your object selected, come up to File, Export, and there's SDL here. Obviously give it a useful name. There's two things you'll want to tick over here, selection only, so make sure that you have your object selected before exporting, and the scale. We need to turn this up to a thousand. Because like I was saying, there's some sort of weird compatibility. So just make sure that's a thousand, and then tick Export SDL. That should export really quickly. If it's taking a while, then you might have other things selected or you haven't reduced the faces on your mesh. So once you've done those steps, you're ready for your 3D slicing program, which I'll give you an introduction to in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.